Let me now go to the next question. A circular ring of radius r is having uniformly distributed charge q. Find the flux crossing through a sphere of radius r having its center on the periphery of the ring. The options are 1, 0, 2, q divided by 4 epsilon 0, 3, q divided by epsilon 0, fourth one, q divided by 3 epsilon 0. Suppose dotted line represents the ring and suppose the radius of the ring is r. Let the solid sphere be shown by a thick line. This is also of the radius equal to r. And you may notice that I have drawn the sphere such that the center of the sphere lies on the periphery of the ring as is required in the problem. Join this point, this point and these two also. You can notice that R, 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 R and R. Therefore, these two are equilateral triangles. This angle is 60, this angle is 60. Total angle is going to be equal to 120 degrees. Note one thing here. To calculate the flux across the sphere, you should consider the portion of the ring lying inside the sphere. Then I can calculate what is the charge lying within the ring. If the charge lying within the ring is Q, by Gauss theorem, the electric flux is Q divided by epsilon 0. For the entire ring, the charge is capital Q. 120 degrees means this portion is one third of the ring. Hence, the charge contained will be equal to Q divided by 3. Therefore, the flux is charge divided by epsilon 0. That is Q divided by 3 epsilon 0. Therefore, the fourth option is the correct answer. Now, I will move on to the next question. Two identical pendulums, A and B, are suspended from the same point. The bobs are given the positive charges, with A having more charge than B. They diverge and reach equilibrium, with A and B making the angles theta 1 and theta 2 with the vertical respectively. Then the options are 1, theta 1 is greater than theta 2, 2, theta 1 is less than theta 2, third, theta 1 is equal to theta 2, fourth one is the tension in A is greater than the tension in B. This question is very important question concept wise. My request is, please try to understand the method of approach and the formula to be remembered in working all problems of this nature. Suppose this is a point of support. From this point of support, there are two identical pendulums. I call one as A and the other as B. Both are charged with the charge on A equal to Q1 say and the charge on B equal to Q2 say. Further, he says that Q1 is greater than Q2. Now, Q1 will repel Q2. Let us consider the equilibrium of Q2. Therefore, the electrostatic force exerted on B due to A is equal to K into Q1 into Q2 divided by D square, where D is the distance between A and B. Suppose T 
T is the tension along the string and mg is the weight of the bob. By applying Lamy's theorem, it can be shown that, sorry, because it requires a lot of time to show it, I do not want to go into the details of Lamy's theorem. But nevertheless, I want to give you one formula and that formula you must remember in order to work any problem of this type. If the angle made by the string with the vertical is theta, then relation between tan theta and the other forces is given by tan theta is equal to Fe divided by mg. Fe divided by mg. Now, consider the angle made by the pendulum B with the vertical. If it is theta 1, then it is tan, tan theta 1 equal to Fe divided by mg. Similarly, if the angle made by this is theta 2, again theta 2 means tan theta 2 is equal to Fe by mg. Please note, electrostatic force in both the cases is k into q1 q2 divided by d square. Since pendulums are also identical, mg is also same. Therefore, both for the pendulum A as well as the pendulum B, you can observe that Fa is same, mg is same, therefore tan theta is same. In other words, theta 1 is equal to theta 2. Therefore, third option is correct. I want you to please note one thing here. Normal wrong concept in your mind is, since Q1 is greater than Q2, the electrostatic force on Q1 may be more than the electrostatic force on Q2. It is wrong because electrostatic force does not depend upon individual charge. It depends on the product of the charges. If you note this point, then third option being correct seems to be almost obvious.